Holly Cotton here. I love it. I love it. I should did the deuces too. I, I'm 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 worried about doing this cute smile. I got next time. Don't we got it? I'm doing the deuces too. But <laughs> Holly Cotton here, you guys, and you know I love 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 when I come across people's stories that are doing something to be the change. If you follow me, you know that it's in my bio. It's what I live for, and how we are all. I guess using our passions, our mission, our purpose, whatever our adversities were, we are now using that as a story of inspiration to change the world and be better for everyone else. So I have Dr. Trail Donk Webb today, and he is going to tell us about all of the stuff that he has going on. You guys, his bio and all of his content, if you follow him, you would already know if you don't, please go follow him. He is a renowned minister, real life speaker. He also has a brand called Real Life. Um, he's going to talk to us about how he found his way, how he found this as a passion. He's going to share his unique story with us. He's actually using his story to inspire incarcerated individuals and, and, and then just basically, I guess, also people to tell you don't go get incarcerated use my story <laughs> to make the right choice as well. So welcome, Dr. Donk. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited about this one. I've been waiting all week to get here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. And you guys just also, it's really funny because when I was reading his bio, he's from Baton Rouge and you know that I went to LSU, I bleed purple and gold. I got a stupid Fleur de Lis tattoo on me that I got when I was young. <sighs> Anyway, so I love, love, love that we also have that Louisiana connection as well, because a lot of people also have a, a negative narrative of Louisiana being country, being ghetto, not having anything going, not having education, all of this stuff, which unfortunately, a lot of that is true. But I love whenever there are stories like mine and then don't today as well, where we're like, no, that's just the minority of the population. You actually have a lot of people here doing big things. So. We gonna put, put Come on. on. Shout out to Louisiana. <laughs> Let's get that straight now. Home of the right. fighting fingers. So oh, yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right. All right. But you know, I'm a little biased, so I'm gonna let him be. Uh. <laughs> so okay. So before we go into how Dr. Trail Webb came about, let's talk about don't. Let's talk about how your story started. And I know that you were also incarcerated. You have a story about that as well. So can you tell us as transparent as you want to be or whatever you want to share with us, can you tell us your story of become uh, from one incarcerated to actually being Dr. Trail Webb right now? Yeah. So my story started out as at 15 years old, I was uh, charged with murder and two counts of armed robbery in Louisiana. And just like we mentioned, um, I come from a family. Family didn't have the, enough money to get the right representation. So I ended up going to trial with a public pretender, you know, and uh, so I, I, just, I was young. I'm thinking that, you know, if I just stick to the code or do whatever it is that I could just come home or do, you know, like do that. And uh, the court system sold us out. Uh, me and my father partner, he's 17, I'm 15. We ended up going to Angola. We got sentenced to life plus 90 years in prison. So let me, so we can understand what I'm saying. At 15 years old, I was sentenced, not faced. I was convicted and sentenced to a maximum life plus 90 years in prison sentence without the benefit of probation and parole. So I was literally sentenced to die. So I was I was sent to Angola. Angola, ninety five percent, and you 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 from there? You know about Angola probably. Ninety five percent of the people that go to Angola don't make it out alive. You come out, you coming out in a pine box, or you're gonna be about 70, 80 years old. Um, so I was sent to this prison, um, and actually I thought I was gonna die in there, um, but I found Christ. I found God in there. My fall partner come to me one day. He like dunk if we're ever gonna get out here. Like you gotta pray. And for me, that was that was hard because I really thought I didn't know how to pray because I would look at all the pastors on the TV, um, use all these big old sophisticated words, and I didn't I didn't have any. So that prevented me from like coming to God. And he was like, nah, you just gotta come to God the way you are from the heart. And um, 
I found God in that place in prison and I began to pray. I began to pray. Um, I began to talk to God, begin to hear the voice of God. Um, but my behavior wasn't lined up with what I was praying for. And I think that's a big thing of what I do today. Um, once my behavior started lining up, I started seeing the full manifestation of God's miracles. Like I am on this podcast because I'm a miracle. All of my partners still in that prison. Most of them dead or they still locked up after all of those years. So one day I was reading the newspaper and I saw my name in it. Um, I didn't know that I had gave my time back or nothing like that. And it says two bad news teen sentence and convictions overturned. And it was my name and my fall partner name in the newspaper. And I literally like, you know, God ever done something for you before the way it's like, this can't be true. Well, that was one of my moments. Um, and so I ended up going back to trial, going back to the court system. I mean, same courtroom, same DA, same everything. The only thing now, I'm operating by faith. And I went in there and they offered me, offered us 10 years credit for time served. And that's how I ended up coming home. Um, and so that's how I got out the prison. And so that's why incarceration is so big for me. It's so big for me to go back in there because I, I, I sh truly believe that God allowed me to go through that, to experience it, to know what it is as I'm going in some of the worst prisons today, being a light, sharing God, going in there, helping them brothers and sisters out. I fly all over the world in different prisons, but my heart go there because I know that's where I was. I never been to a prom. I never been to a sweetheart ball from 15 to 21 years old. Man, I was in prison watching people get stabbed up like the worst of the worst. You know what I'm saying? And so when I go into the detention centers now, when I go into the prisons, it's like I have the cure because I've, I've survived it. So I know what it is to be in there. And so I get out of prison. At this time, my cousin them blew up. Uh, Boosie, we talked about. Him, uh, he's this big rapper now, you know, wipe me down, you know. Uh, and funny thing is, funny thing is, and everybody that can watch Boosie Life, they know me. They know my life, right, pretty much. Um, but he would come to the visitation booth and rap. He was he was young, though. I was in prison, and I was like, something special. Like, something special, but I had no clue that it would be, you know, like that. You know, coming from where we come from, Across the street from LSU, like it was bad to to what we see today. Um, so I came home and I had a vision written down because I was like, you know, you know, we say, God, if you get me out of this, I'm never gonna do it again. Have you ever been in any of those situations? God, you get me out of this, and you can stop me whenever you want, Holly, because I just get no. I'm, go ahead, go ahead. Right, and so I had a vision like, God, if you ever get me out of this prison. Like, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to be in your church. I'm going to do everything. But Boosie was waiting on me at the gate with a lot of money. He this big rapper now. And so my vision went one way, and we toured the world and went the other way. Uh, Wipe Me Down was the number one song out. Um, and it was just the fame everywhere. And we toured the world. And as we toured the world, um, I just would always pray every morning. Like that was that was something that my mom them instilled in us. Every time you wake up, you need to say something to God before you before you do anything. And that stuck with me. So even when I was in the streets, even when I was in pre, even when I, I will always wake up brushing my teeth. Thank you, Father God, for another day. And then one day I was doing that, and I was brushing my teeth, and I just started crying and couldn't stop. I had an encounter with God in the in the in the bathroom brushing my teeth. And he was like, stop. He was like, stop, send all the money back. I'm like, this can't be God. Like, cause I don't have a plan B. And that day I made a decision. He said, I'm gonna take you all around the world, everywhere y'all toured. He said, I'm gonna use you. And everywhere from that day, I gave God a yes. And I've been walking with God and my life took a, a turn, like Saul to Paul in the Bible and it's, it's been like that ever since. So now today, um, I'm a master life changer. I get a chance to travel around the world and like impacting lives, changing lives and um, 
some of the biggest entertainers today. I'm their prayer warrior. I'm their covering. And so, man, God is it's just amazing how God is the way he's using my life. It's him. I'm just grateful uh, to be in this place. I'm in Atlanta now. I'm a pastor here at a church in Atlanta. I do a lot of online ministry. Um, I'm a real life speaker. I travel around. Um, my wife, she's a top realtor up here. She used to be my getaway driver in Baton Woods. <laughs> and so, uh, man, life is great. Bro, bro, like, bro. we talk about growth, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's me, Holly. Like, here I am. Um, what you see is what you get. Um, and I'm grateful because I don't have to fake it, you know? But you know, one thing that you said that I really want to go back and rewind to and, and sort of reiterate the point that you said, you said something and I don't, I don't, I'm just going to paraphrase it because I don't remember exactly, but I caught it. And you said something to the lines of, you know, there's something that you need to do. You pray. And then now you change your actions to align with that. And I think a lot of people get discouraged or people that say something negative about Christianity or religion or whatever, whatever, whatever God they believe in is that they forget that you also have to be accountable and you have to change your actions in order to align what, whatever it is that you're doing. You can't just, you can't just <laughs> go and say, Lord, send me this idea. And then you don't follow through with the execution. And even for me, whenever, whenever I pray or whenever I'm manifesting or, or focusing on things, I focus on, so what are the things that I need to do to make this happen? What does give me the strength to get up today so that I can focus on this or make me push away distractions so that I can zone in on this. You know, like people forget it's also you <laughs> that yeah. has to make yeah. it happen. You can't yeah. just be out here and be like, Lord, let me win the lottery and never buy a lottery ticket. You know, like no one's going to do that. Yeah. Go ahead. I think for me, um, you're right, because I, I really experienced that. Um, because for myself, and it's it's amazing how you can see it through what happened with my life. I was one of the worst of the worst people, hands down. Like coming from Louisiana, on the news, front page, like all of this stuff. I was one of the worst. I didn't see the I didn't see the results of greatness what I'm experiencing now as long as my behavior was like that. It wasn't until I made the adjustments and looked at myself, I was bigger than this. I'm I'm bigger, I'm better than that. Like you say, like sitting there broke. Hold up, I'm better than that. I gotta do something. You know what I'm saying? So I gotta, I gotta put that, I gotta make a change and I gotta put my best foot forward. And and the rest is gonna kind of fall in as you keep going. And so for me, that was everything. And now I get it because there's something that have stuck with me the entire time. And you have to know what you're called to. I ain't called to the struggle. I can talk about trouble anywhere, any day, any place. And so now what have happened was the favor comes with that because I, I'm cool and I know who I am. I know who I'm called to. I know who I'm called to help. I know who I'm. And so once you know that and you operate from that place, there's a freedom that comes on your life that I'm experiencing. You know, like there's a freedom that I can give you a thumbs up. I can let you know, like Holly, I see your page. I like it. Keep going. You know what I'm saying? And don't have a comparison there. And I think so much, so much today's time, if a person tap into that and operate like that, man, there's no limit to what your life can become. That's look at me. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, that's, that's great what you're saying. Yeah, that that's great advice. And that's, that's the whole thing with the competition part all the time. It's like, you guys, if we work together, it's collaboration, not competition. I don't want to be anybody but me. And I think that it's something, maybe it's because I'm getting old in life where now I'm just like, baby, this all you getting right here. Like this is the best version of me. I'm giving it to you. If you don't like it, kick rocks, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. So let me just go and, and ask you, go, let, let's rewind and go back to whenever you first did the transition, right? So I know that it had to be challenging because 
here you are as someone that's street that's you got street credit you got you know reputation i ain't i ain't the one you want to um say um f-a-f-o like i'm not the one right so going from that person to now going into some type of facility where you are talking and now you're like hey don't do crime don't be a criminal people are like what what you selling out you don't you like what happened to the guy who was doing this and we we respected you and you had street credit and now you want to come in here and act because i you know people now you want to be all soft now you want to do this now you want to do that so can you tell us about that transition and some of i guess the feedback that you got some of the things that you had to deal with with having that transition so most definitely great question also um for me it was more so it was more so me being in my head dealing with that because i'm thinking like i was so real for the streets and in that way i vowed to never be this person if we could be honest i'm like listen i would never do that like i was so so keyed in on being this tip-top gangster in the world like and i lived up to that name um but there's a thing that i heard that the world can give you a reputation and you have to do everything to live up to that name. And that's what I did. Right. Um, so for those, somebody that's real, like if you really real in life and you encounter me and you see where I come from, what I did, I realized something real ones want real ones to win. So I've never had nobody come to me for who I'm called to now. But those who I'm, call, I'm called to the ones that the anointing of God on your life attracts your past. So it's everywhere where I come from. Again, the anointing of God on your life attracts your past. So I'm called to those that was doing all the crime, all the stuff that I was doing and everything. Real recognize real. They really know that I really made a change. They really know that I have the answers because if anybody is in their right mind, they don't want to keep going to prison, keep getting shot up, keep getting in trouble. If you're in your right mind and when you meet somebody that have the cure to help you, I'm not just on the stage talking about this. No, we have programs in place like I'm in the trenches. I'm calling them like when when they reach out to me, I, they're getting a phone call from me or somebody off my team. We're walking somebody to show them how to beat the game. And so it's been just a plus plus. You know what I'm saying? Um, any any um, lashback that we did get, and it's just been a sad thing. Uh, they say that you get the most, the least blessings from your own hometown, right? And when I tell you it is real, and not my people who I serve down there, but the people who in position to help people that's stuck in the struggle, Man, in our own hometown, I may get booked up and called everywhere else. But your own hometown will look at you like you steal that person. I'm like, what else is going to take? And so that's the only place that I've ever got. And it's not from the, from the struggle now, the people who I'm called to. I go anywhere. Like, I'm good in every hood, every place with every real person. They rock with me. I'm grateful for that. I'm saying the people who are in position down there to make a change. So like I'm getting called Baltimore, all of these places where they're bringing me in the school systems, bringing me into prisons, bring, and the testimonies is crazy. Lives being changed. Young men ended up in college reaching back to me like, dunk, you impact my life. But at home, like you got to do 10 background checks just to go speak at a school. Are you serious? You know what I'm saying? And so, that's the only backlash that I've got um, since. Other than that, man, my people love me. I ain't lying. And I'm grateful. And I love them back, you know? Well, I'm just going to say this because I try not to talk about Louisiana because I'm in Houston. But I'll say this, that that mindset and that philosophy is so embedded. And it's almost it goes back to the slavery days. You know what I mean? It's like what the master said you could do 
what you were supposed to do and it's and and re and remember the like the whoever was in the house sweeping and cooking biscuits they was like you get off this porch don't you come over here trying to make us go to freedom or <laughs> whatever and it's that same thing now because it's like we're trying to bring you out we're trying to show you things we're trying to do stuff and it's it's i don't it one it's because it's easier just to lock people up than to change the system it's easier to repeat the cycle than to change it so i digress i digress <laughs> no i i and i but one thing about it is um and i'm grateful to say that uh like i love home you know like my heart go all of my partners left and every one of them that have left all of us are thriving like every one of them every one of us like we have the cure for beating the game like it's it's a way out and so um i'm just grateful i'm just grateful also that like you say the transition for me um it wasn't easy i'm not about to sit here and say it was easy i've been living wrong all my life you know what i'm saying but once i started getting in these rooms and i saw myself different like I, I saw how important a mentor was. When I was coming up, mentors was taboo. Like we didn't have no mentors like coming up in that bottom. Like we didn't have that. Man, it's so important to have mentors and people that then then been successful and sitting down and teaching you this and how to do it. And I'm always a student, you know? And so man, it's it's I'm grateful that I get a chance to go back and forth to somebody else come. Well, and it's funny because I was just having this story. It was a different conversation, but it's something similar to what you were saying. And I was talking about how I got married young. I had a kid young, you know, I, I say young, but I was 23. But still, when I, I have a son that's 24 and he seems so young to me, <laughs> I'm like, how was I a mom at this age? And you ain't even ready to get your life <laughs> remotely right, you know, but he um but for me i tried to i was telling him i said it was a culture in louisiana that that's what you there was no go get your life right get a college degree i was the first person in my family to go to college ever ever and, and still i think i have one great nephew that went to college like it's just not it wasn't something to do and it was literally it was that thought process either you were in the streets or you got married and started a family and that w what you had. And that's the way it was. There was no breakout. There was no one like how we're teaching these people. There's other things to do. Go be an entrepreneur, start your own business, go do this, go do that. There weren't those resources. Nobody said that kind of stuff. I didn't even know what entrepreneur was till I was the <laughs> <Yeah>. till last year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I know you have a million stories that you could tell that would make us feel good, that would inspire us, all of that stuff. But can you tell us about one or two situations of someone that you just really hold close to your heart where it was a situation where it was someone that you helped, that you you were like, wow, I didn't think this person could even be helped or one of those feel good stories. Do you have any of those stories? Somebody that you just like, that's, that's, that's right here. I, I'm, I, I forever. And it's, it's, I tell you, it's a lot of them. Like, and I'm saying this with humble, I'm humble. Like God have put me in a position to where that's all I do. Like God have put my life in a place to where it's attracted to that. Um, one of the highlights for me, there's this young man, his name Malachi. Malachi from Louisiana. Um, and this happened like within the past three years. He's been up here. Well, anyway, he he got shot up six times down there. Um, my mom, my mom, my mother-in-law meet his grandmother at a store. And you know how it is down there, like now. Whenever somebody's going through something, I'd have made it out. So your family trying to connect you with everybody. Where this grandmother had a, a grandson and he wow, he doing everything wow. Um, so I ended up connecting with him, going to Louisiana, traveling down there, talking to him. He didn't want to open the door and talk. So I had to pour in to him through the door. Like this story is so amazing. 
So he opened the door and I sit down with him and talk to him. I met him right where he was. Talked to him, poured into him. A um, couple months later, his mom, he got in some more trouble. His mom packed up. They moved out here to Atlanta. He just finished, uh, he got his GED. He's graduated. He's in college. He going to be, he, take, he just passed his real estate exam. He's about to be a realtor up here. Like you wouldn't even know or smell the smoke on this young man's life. So now he traveled with me, speaking to other young people. Um, he's one that just been, you know, it just near and dear to me because I saw the transition. Um, so he would be Malachi. Shout out to Malachi. He would definitely, and he beat the system. He come up here with an ankle bracelet on his leg. He don't have an ankle bracelet no more. Like that's success for me, you know? Um, so most definitely. He would definitely oh, be. Oh, that's so, he, and you have a book too, right? Aren't you an author? So it's, 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 it's haven't been released yet. Okay. Uh, yep. So I actually got a proud devotional and the autobiography of my life released. It's supposed to be this year. Um, okay. So it's add known. So that's why I haven't been released. So let me ask you this before, before we talk about how people can like find you, support you stuff. My last question for you. So as where you are right now, and looking back at everything that you've done in your life, whether it be being 15 in the streets or whether it be in that transitional period, when you look at your life and you look back, is there one thing that you wish you could go back and say at one specific time where you think that something would have changed your trajectory? Great question. Great question. I try. I try. <laughs> great question. And yes, because I think about this all the time. Um, I regret not listening when I was in uh, when I was in middle school. I think that was a real point for me. Um, I have an amazing father, but my mom was divorced, so I I went to those streets and we went on a field trip. I was going to Kenilworth Middle School, and we went on a field trip. They rounded all the um, trouble kids per se out of school and they took us on this field trip and when we went on this field trip they had this guy um, that was trying to talk to us like on scared straight you ever saw scared straight they had this guy trying to talk to us and man i'm from you you have been to lsu i'm from across the track so i don't know um so they put but i was being very disruptive and they put me out the they put me out the uh, room where he was talking and I couldn't hear what was going on. Uh, that was when I was like in the seventh grade. And fast forward three years later, I went to that same place. The field trip where we went on was to Angola. It was Angola that I went to. And the first day that I went in there, I ended up running into this guy. This guy was like, hey man, you look familiar. He said, you ever came up here on a field trip before? It was the guy that tried to talk to me. I came back to the prison with three times more time than him. And so I used to always think about like, dog, what if, what if I would have listened to him? You know what I'm saying? So that's a point for me that I'm like, dog, I wish I can go back, you know? And because I probably, I probably be a basketball player or something. I probably, you know, I'm not tall, but I used to like ball. So anything could have been different, but, I also say like God had a purpose and a reason uh, because now I'm, I'm living. Like life is amazing. Life is great for me now. So, yeah. Yeah. And I have, you know, my story too is not to take away from your story, but my story is I feel that sort of for me too, I was just going along in life and I was totally complacent. I was just going, being a nurse, doing this, doing that. And then in 2012, when I got diagnosed with cancer, I was like, well, Lord, no, what is this foolishness? <laughs> like, what? Me? Cancer? And then I, and then I, I like the reality sat in, set in because me being a nurse, I know so many people who died from cancer because you hear the word cancer and you think chemo, death, whatever. And I was like, wow, for me, that was a wake up call of saying, you need to get your life together. You need to focus on the things that are important on you. 
just so you realize how delicate life is. So I like to ask other people because I feel like I didn't, I didn't need God to go up that far to make me get cancer. No, <laughs> like I didn't need that hard of a lesson. Y'all just, he yeah. just love me a little yeah. bit, like highly get it together. Like we ain't have to go hard in the paint, yeah. Jesus. We ain't have to yes, right, right. Like, a little lesson, a little lesson. But when I think back, I think about all of these situations, kind of like what you just said, where I feel like I had wake up calls, but I wasn't listening. And I had things that were saying, this is not where you should be. This is not what I want your, your passion to be. This is not your purpose. These are not the things you should be aligning with. And I wasn't listening. So it took something dramatic like cancer to make me go, oh, Lord, let me get my life to get, <laughs> together. For real, for real. I understand. I understand. I, and, I, and, and, and it's amazing how God will allow you to go through things just is every every opposition is only an opportunity for you to see how amazing god is like you don't feel amazing in the time but he allow you to go through things so you know when those tough times come that hold up i'm i'm god in the valley when it's tough but also i'm god on the mountaintop so don't forget me now you know what i'm saying like when you pop in and stuff that's why i don't care whatever i'm doing it's it is not me doing all this. It's God did this for my life. It's no way in the world that I can be on this podcast right now, coming from Baton Rouge after the life that then this this is the only thing that I kind of like Google friendly like is that you can Google my old life. You know, it's the fun part about it. Like you can really Google my own life. Shout out to Boosie because he made it possible the way you can Google us and see like, whoa. Like, oh, what Don't Sam was real. Like, he really was like this. And now look, like, I am totally transformed. Like, this is amazing. So, yeah. Yep. I love that. I love that. Okay. So, I do know that a lot of people are inspired by your story. A lot of people love to see certain things. Of, so I guess there are certain things that are clickable or clickbait or whatever. And one of the things is always going out to incarcerated families, going out to, to, you know, not just the people that are there, but also the families on the outside. So I know you have so many things that you're doing, but is there anything that you need us to do to help support what you're trying to do? Or how can we support your mission, everything that you're doing as well? So I think that um, right now I do a lot online. So as far as our Instagram, um, oh, also we have a, oh my God, man, the team would have killed me if I didn't mention it. So Real Life Impact is a baby that we have birthed. Oh Real yeah, I see. And I even yeah. said it at the beginning and we didn't go into it, yeah. right. Real Life Impact is super cool because I believe that to stop the prison pipeline, you have to get it from the start. So we have a program that's aimed to at-risk youth um, and that's youth in the detention centers and that's youth inside of the school systems. Right now we have a pilot of like four to five different schools, two different detention centers, um, and it's successful. And what we do is we, we plan them in there. We do six months to a year within those six months to a year. Uh, we go there and do the time with them. We go there and spend the time with them. We go there and be available, um, and show them uh, real life ways on how to handle conflict resolution, on how to shift your mindset, on how to um, handle anger management, things that we deal with, you know what I'm saying? And just pretty much showing them how I went from there to here, but it's in a model form. Um, and we have a real life curriculum that goes along with it. And so, Hey, if you could tell somebody about that, that'd be great. Um, and I and I love it because it's it's proven to work. Because we're just taking the necessary tools that got me to be on this podcast as a changed man, and we've put it now in a program form. And so I just think that detention centers all over, schools all over need to have this, it needs to be in there. Somebody that can it's one thing to go in there, but if, especially today's time, the generation of today, if you can't reach them, if you can't talk their language, if you can't reach them right where they are, man, you are going to miss them. And the suicide rate is 
is high as it's ever been today. Drugs is higher. Violence is at an all-time high. Everybody that have been in our program, they've graduated. Everybody. So, um, yeah, real life impact. And so, yeah. So how can they find that or support it or like what, how do how do they reach? So what we, what we're doing right now, uh, real life worldwide uh, dot org. You can reach out there. Um, real life brand dot com. Or you can reach out on my social media. All my social media. Donk speaks. Um, email. We have an email where you can email us. Real life worldwide CEO at gmail dot com. Again, that's real life worldwide just like it spelled out just like it said uh ceo at gmail.com um and we do we do follow right back um i'm very hands-on y'all especially with the people um so yeah yep so okay i love that i love that okay and i always say this at the end as well all you got to do is go look in the podcast notes i'll have clickable links as well so i'll have their email address and the social media is clickable links. So just go scroll down on the podcast notes and read it. I put it in there all the time. So <laughs> you can do that as well. <laughs> okay. So thank you, Dr. Trail Donk Webb. We appreciate you sharing your story and thank you for doing what you're doing and still being the change and giving back and all of that great stuff. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. Blessings to all that you do. You ever need me? Listen, Louisiana, I'm one call away, Holly. Love you. You have a blessing, okay?